I'm going to be very honest. Everything that you said sounded like a tongue twister to <laughs> really? me. Hi everyone and welcome back to our final episode of We Ask Doctor. Today's topic is on the human immunodeficiency virus and Kaposi sarcoma. Now, most of you must be familiar with HIV, but did you know that it also increases your risk of cancer? Huh? Joining us today is none other than Dr. Richard, who is an expert and he'll be answering your most commonly Googled questions. Hi Dr. Richard, nice to meet you. Hello Elliot, nice to be here. What is HIV? HIV is a human immunodeficiency virus, HIV for short. It is a virus that uh, once contracted attacks the immune system of a patient and it attacks and depletes the immunity. Uh, once without the immune system, the body is then prone to getting infections, both common and uncommon infective uh, organisms, as well as cancers. Right. Does this mean that HIV increases your risk of cancer? Uh, yes, it does. So, HIV is the virus itself. The disease that it causes is actually AIDS, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. And there's a whole long list of diseases that uh, alert a physician to the presence of underlying AIDS. Uh, so these are the unusual infections or the unusual cancers or even the common cancers. So cancers are associated with HIV and essentially these cancers are driven by certain viruses. For example, Epstein-Barr virus in lymphoma, the human papilloma virus in uh, cancer of the cervix uh, and human herpes virus type 8 in Kaposi sarcoma. So these viruses are in the body of the person. It usually doesn't cause problem, but once the HIV attacks and the immunity of the patient drops, then these viruses will then flare up and drive the cancer. Right. I'm going to be very honest. Everything that you said sounded like a tongue twister to <laughs> really? me. Every single virus you just named. In a nutshell, some of these cancers are caused by particular viruses. If your body has no immunity against these offending viruses, these viruses then run crazy and then the cancer develops. Right, right, right. And I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Yes. But what is Kaposi sarcoma? Okay, so Kaposi sarcoma is a rare form of sarcoma. Uh, it is a soft tissue tumour. It's not common, uh, and if it does appear, the pace of the disease can be quite slow. So we call it indolent behaviour. It can appear on the skin as a reddish, purplish patch or plug or nodule. Sometimes it can appear on the inner lining of our mouth, intestinal tract or our respiratory system. It could appear anywhere is what you're saying? Yes, and it's usually on the superficial uh, surface lining of, uh, of, of our skin, of our inner lining. So this carpal sarcoma ha happens in essentially uh, two groups of people. Uh, one by geographical location, another group will be those which are infected with the HIV. So, Kaposi sarcoma is not common in Southeast Asia. Uh. Uh, thankfully, it's, it's not common here, but it's more common in the Mediterranean, Central and Eastern Europe. People of that origin, people of the geographical location are at higher risk of getting Kaposi sarcoma. Why is it called Kaposi? Is it named after someone? I don't know too. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to delete that question. I don't know the answer. How is Kaposi sarcoma treated? So treatment is actually heterogeneous. A lot of the patients don't need treatment. Oh. So Kaposi sarcoma is very uh, indolent, uh, slow growing. If it doesn't cause problems, you may not need treatment. For the patients with HIV, the, the basic premise is you must treat the HIV. As the immune system builds up itself again, the immune system takes care of the disease itself. So the Kaposi sarcoma actually will regress uh, without actual treatment, just by treating the virus alone. Oh, but if you don't treat the HIV, that could really exacerbate the It will the, exacerbate the, the right. Wow, okay. Uh, and in some people, they will need treatment. For example, the lesions are symptomatic, they are bleeding, uh, they are causing cosmetic problems, then those need to be treated. If they are localised, we can uh, give it some spot radiation, just a bit of radiation over there. We can do surgery, we can do some kind of cryo, cold therapy or laser. How about you freeze it off? Something like that, that is cryotherapy. Okay, cool. The problem comes when it becomes very extensive. So it spreads all over the, let's say, the, the surface of the skin. Then those you can't spot laser or you cannot radiate because they're too, too, too big an area. And so for that group of patients, you might need chemotherapy. I see. Okay. So, doctor, what are some of the challenges in dealing with patients who both have HIV and cancer? Primarily, the challenge is still uh, infection. So in a HIV patient with active disease, their immunity is low. Uh, for oncologists like myself, we are giving chemo and chemo reduces the immune system even further. So once you put a double whammy together, the, the patient practically has no immunity. Um, they'll be prone to all sorts of um, bugs, weird places, weird infection, weird bugs to contend with. So this is our, our biggest challenge. Okay, well that's, that's very enlightening. Thank you so much, doctor. All right, and with that, we've come to the end of a very interesting topic. Wow, I didn't even know that HIV was linked to cancer. Thank you, Dr. Richard, for your time and for sharing, your, oh, thank you for sharing your wonderful insights. 
And thank you to everyone at home as well for watching this entire series. We really hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you real soon. Goodbye!